Hi, welcome to Primetime Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and in today's video, we're gonna go over five different scenarios in which it's okay to back off the non-volley zone line. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the very first scenario, which it's gonna be okay to back up off the line is if you get lobbed. So I have my friend Kaden here. We're gonna get at this dink rally. Okay, let's say we're dinking here and he lobs me. Okay, so obviously I'm gonna have to try to retrieve that lob and make it back up to the net. So that's the obvious one. If you get lobbed, you're gonna have to come off the line. But more specifically, I'm talking to the people who, let's say, let's say you, you don't have that much mobility or it's hard for you to get back to the court if you get lobbed like that. Sometimes you will run into a team that loves to lob, okay? So in this case, I would suggest if you keep getting beat by those lobs to maybe take a, a, a step back or two and play a little off the non-volley zone line to give yourself some time. So if I'm playing from here, let's see now we're dinking and he tries to lob me, okay? Okay, so now I have a little bit of room to kind of see what he's gonna do and I don't have to move back as far, okay? So that's the, nut, that's the first scenario which it would be okay to come off the non-volley zone line and back up. Okay, so the second scenario which it would be okay to back off the non-volley zone line and you'll see this even in the top, even with the top pros, okay? So let's say we're, we're in a dink rally here. Okay, and if you watch any of our previous videos, it's, it's really vital we teach that you have to try to lean in so that you can be offensive here at the net. You want to lean in, and if I can, I'm, I'm going to try to take those dinks as volleys. Okay, but this second scenario is when I misjudge uh, the depth of the ball. So let's say I'm leaning in here, trying to be offensive, trying to find a high ball, and I misjudge one, I have to take a step back and then make sure that I come back up. So let's say I'm trying to volley this ball and it lands a little bit deeper than I think. Uh, I have to back up because if I don't back up, let's say it lands right here and I didn't volley the ball, I'm gonna be contacting this, the ball right here really close to my body and that's a potential pop-up. So what I'll do if I didn't, if I misjudge that ball, I just take a step back, hit it in front of me out in front. So I have my contact point out in front here and I just got to hit a good uh, unattackable dink so that I could come back up. Okay. So let's see that again. See, so I'm leaning in. Okay. Cause I'm not going to judge every single ball perfectly. So let's say I misjudge it and then I got to come back right away. Let's see that one more time. I misjudge it. Okay come back up, all right? So that's the second scenario in which it's okay to back up off the non-volley zone line, okay? We're not gonna guess every single time correctly where the ball is gonna land. But let's say I'm a little late, okay? I wanna take that step back, come in and I'm back up at the net. All right, so the third scenario in which it's okay to back up off the non-volley zone line is when you are playing players that are killing you with pace and speed. Okay, or if they really have these tricky shots with misdirection. Um, a lot of times you'll be up here and players that love to speed it up, let's say you're just getting beat with players that love to speed up the ball on low balls and you can't handle it. Sometimes it's a good idea, like the lob scenario, to maybe play a foot or two back of off the line. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna give you a good amount of extra reaction time so that you can see the ball, okay? So let, let's think a little bit. Let's say if I was right up at the line, okay? And then a player like you like to speed it up, okay? Sometimes I won't be ready for that. And if you know that you can't handle that pace, you, what you can try is just to just play off the line a bit, okay? So there's obviously, in this whole video, there's two disadvantages of playing off the line. The first one, Okay, if you're all the way up, this is the most offensive position you could be. I could, I could just poke volley these balls um, and I could really be aggressive on any dink that's deep, okay? So if I'm not all the way up at the line, I'm giving, 
I'm giving up some offensive play. Okay, and also if I'm not all the way up at the line, there's more court for my opponent to hit down at my feet. Okay, so if, if I'm not all the way up, there's more co court that's exposed. Okay, so those are two disadvantages, but if you cannot react to the balls or if, you, if your opponents are really um, firing the balls away um, and they are hitting it really fast with a pace that you can't handle sometimes it's okay to play off the line a bit so let's so i'm going to play off the line let's say you like to speed it up okay it might give me just the reaction time i need to be here and um to be here and be ready for the ball okay you'll be surprised what that one foot to two feet does with your reaction time okay so that's one of the things you could try if you're getting beat with the pace um, of your opponents at the net. All right, so the fourth scenario of when it's okay to back up off the non volley zone line is to hit, to, to get ready and in position to hit an offensive shot. Okay, so let's just think about this scenario. Let's say uh, you serve, Kaden, okay, so you're back there. You serve, okay, I return and come in. Now I'm coming into the net and Caden is now hitting his third shot. Okay, sometimes, a lot of times, obviously, if he doesn't drive that ball, he's gonna try to drop that third into, into the non-volley zone here. Okay, so why don't you just take a few um, third shots and just stay back there, just so that they can see, okay? So he's, he's trying to hit this third shot into the kitchen, and I'm trying my best to hold my line and keep it deep, right? My main thing is I'm trying to either put it away or keep him back. So this fourth scenario, which you can do, which you can use to, to back up when it's okay to back up off the non volleys online is to hit uh, an offensive shot. So some of these shots that he's hitting, maybe I could step back, get my feet into position to hit a ground stroke to really put extra pace on that ball. So instead of me leaning in and trying to volley from a low point, let's say if he's hitting good third shot drops, okay? I could also maybe step back and then push forward and hit a solid ground stroke to try to keep him back. So let's let's see that, okay? Go, all right. So if he hits a third and it's high, I can take a step back and really put a lot of pressure, okay? So there's really two ways when somebody's hitting their third shot, you're either right up at the line and you're trying to roll shots or trying to volley hard shots, but if they're hitting good thirds, if you have good ground strokes, you could really try to keep that pace um, to, the, to the end and the depth of the court. And you could try to step back and hit that ground stroke. So that's the fourth scenario, which it would be beneficial to back up off the line, off the non-volley zone. Okay, so the fifth scenario in which I would say it's okay to back up is going to be when you're playing defense. Now in a game, Obviously, you and your partner are gonna have the best control of the point at the net. Sometimes you and your partner are scrambling and you get pushed off the, the non-volley zone line and basically your opponent gets balls to hit down at your feet. So sometimes what, what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna either pop up a ball and, and I find myself or me and my partner at, at this position. So let's, let's say you push me off the line and we're scrambling, okay? Sometimes I take a step back to give me some reaction time, and then I try to capture the net and get back up to the non-volley zone. So let's see that again, okay? So if I get pushed, pushed off and I hit a really high one, I'm trying to give myself a little bit more time to see that ball and to get back into the point. Now, the main thing is you don't wanna be backing up while uh, while you're hitting, okay? So that's gonna, that's gonna cause more, more errors and it's going to pop the ball even more. If I have enough time to back up and then set my feet before he hits that ball, then that's okay, okay? They're gonna have more court to, to hit to because I'm further back in the court, but it's gonna give me a little bit more reaction time um, as, I'm, as I'm farther from the contact point of the ball. So let's see that if I get, Push back, okay. Okay, and then maybe I'm gonna try to get back up here, okay. So that's the fifth scenario. 
if you're playing defense and you want to take a step back if you have enough time make sure you set your feet hit that ball and then eventually your goal is to come back up with your partner to take control of the net all right so those are the five different scenarios in which it's okay to take a step back off the non-volley zone or to back up in the middle of a point obviously um, generally you want to be up here controlling the point and controlling the net as a team you, you want to be up at the non-volley zone line as much as you can but in those certain specific scenarios those are some scenarios that you don't have to be glued to the non-volley zone line you even watch the top pros those guys will take a step back every once in a while so that they can um, put themselves in a better position in that point okay so Thank you so much for watching. I hope these tips and scenarios were helpful um, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Thanks so much for watching. For more free video lessons, please visit primetimepickleball.com. But before you head on over there, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, for primetime pickleball shirts like this and other great apparel, please visit ptpgear.com.